guys, we're gonna do a little bit of something different today. Yo yo, it's show show. Welcome back to my YouTube video. Now, anybody who knows me knows that I am a uh, I am a Disney princess for this company I work at called A Tale as Old as Time. Let me see. Let me try to get my. Sorry, fuck. I don't know. I don't know how to edit, so you're just going to have to deal with that awkwardness. I also want to make sure that it's leveled. This is so annoying, honestly, what the hell. There, that's better. But yeah, so I decided I wanted to do some Disney theories today. Oh, look, Beauty and the Beast, Disney theories. I, uh, I am Princess Jasmine for... Though for those little children's birthdays parties that I do and everything. So, let's get started. I think I clicked on this link where it says 20 insane Disney movie fan theories that will blow your mind. So, let's get started. Okay, there's this whole intro and a stupid video. Okay, the first one on the list is Lilo and Nani's parents from Lilo and Stitch were in the CIA. Um, I don't, I don't find that completely impossible, or what's the word, like, untrue, it is possible. Um, one thing for sure is because there's like a CIA worker who comes along and, and, uh, like watches them, that he impersonates himself as a social worker. Uh, yeah, so it's not completely impossible when... I don't know, they, I'm sure it's not unheard of that if anything happens to someone who works in the CIA and they have, like, children or anything like that, that they always have someone in the CIA, like, to watch over them because they're in the CIA, but also they're probably, like, really good friends and they trust them, but especially since they're in the CIA with them, they're, like, the most trusted people that you could deal with to protect your kids and all that. Um, maybe both of them? I don't know if both of them, but one for sure, maybe, and the other one's just, like, a partner, and, well, they both passed away, so I don't find that completely impossible, but let's see what this says. Though Mr. and Mrs. Pelikai, can't say their last name, die before the events in the movie take place, one fan theory believes they led secret lives, and Cobra Bubbles holds the key. I mean, it's true, anyone has known anything about, like, CIA workers is they never let anyone know what they really do, especially their family, because they don't want to put them in danger. Anyone who ever knows, like, would be in danger to the enemy and everything. You can't let anybody know what you really do. So, um... And Cobra Bubble holds the key. We're supposed to assume a former CIA agent left the business to become a social worker. I mean, yeah, but were he still a CIA agent? He's just, you know, posing as a social worker? Highly unlikely. What's more likely is Cobra worked with either one of both Lilo and Nani's parents in the CIA, which is explain why he hasn't already yanked Lilo out from under Nani's care. That's another thing, too. And if you've seen the movie, like... Like, there's a lot of stuff that happens when he visits that looks kind of sus to him, but you know, you know what's really happening before he gets there and how it looks bad when he didn't see what happened before. Like, he would have already been like, mm-hmm, wrote his little notes and then was like, I'm gonna take her away. Although, 
He did try to do that, like, near the end when he was, she was like, look, I already have this job, like, please don't take her away from me, like, I just came from an interview or whatever, like, but, um, that's because, like, he had no choice at that point, but he gave her so many chances, some see, like, social workers, they're like, nah, man, you had your chance, uh... Furthermore, the theory suggests Lilo's love of photography and unusual taste in books are due to part of her parents' CIA influence. We see from Toy Story 2 was secretly a villain. I don't think so. I don't think so. In this one, like... I could definitely see that they could have made him into one somehow, but... Mm-mm. -mm. No, they had that same theory before Toy Story 4 came out that Bo Peep was going to be, um, but she wasn't. Let's see what they say. We see the penguin who Woody says at the beginning of the movie seems like a sweet guy, but is he really? According to one theory, Weezy forgotten on a shelf, probably became jealous. I mean, that's possible, but no, I don't think so. And the gang all the time, so when it came time for the yard sale, Weezy wasn't even trying to save himself. I knew what he would attempt to rescue him. Possibly getting sold in the press, which is exactly what happened. With Woody out of the picture, Weezy would have a better chance of getting attention from Andy. Plus, remember how Weezy didn't say anything when Woody fell off of Buster, the dog? He did nothing to save his friend after- I mean, that's a good point, but- I think, wasn't this the time when, like, he was trying to save Buzz, and, like, that was the time where all the toys were kind of pissed at him, so they're like, fuck, fuck you, like, I don't know, um, cause he was only in the first movie, and, like, everybody was, and that's when Buzz came in, and that's when, like, Woody was actually jealous of Buzz, and everybody was pissed at him for being, like, a little shit to buzz, but, mm, I don't know. That would include Woozy, Wo Wheezy, Woozy. I mixed Woody and Wheezy together. But yeah. Okay, um, the book Belle describes at the beginning of Beauty and the Beast is another famous Disney movie. Not wrong, I think that would be, I believe they said that she explained Aladdin, but let's see what they say. I think so. I think so. During the song Belle, aka the tune the townspeople all sing about how weird Belle is, Belle describes her favorite far off places. Daring sword fights magic spells a prince in disguise. Aladdin. To one fan, this sounded like Aladdin, but another claimed it was Sleeping Beauty. My favorite, by the way, and being Princess Jasmine and all, but I really did love that story. Like, that's my favorite story. Um. But another claimed it was Sleeping Beauty. Prince in Disguise. I don't think it would be Sleeping Beauty because they said a prince in disguise. And I don't think he ever was in disguise. She just didn't know who he was. But anyways, for starters, Aladdin is, is disguised as a prince, not the other way around. Prince Philip, however, is a prince in disguise and princess. Or not really, though. She just doesn't know who he is when they meet. Uh, but I don't know, mostly because she doesn't know he's a prince. Plus, we get a glimpse of the book when Belle reads it while sitting among the sheep and it looks more like sleeping. It does, it does, but the way it's described, it seems like Aladdin. Maybe it's like a mixture of the two. Boo from Monsters, Inc. is the witch from Brave. I've heard of this theory. I don't know, though. I don't know. I'm not even going to read this one because it's, like, everybody's, like, kind of aware of, like, the... There's, like, a painting in the back that show, the shows it looks like Boo. But anyways, Emily from Toy Story 2 is actually Annie's mom. I don't find this impossible to believe either because, like, again, they talk about, like, the hat that's connected to uh, the same hat that Andy has. That this girl, Emily, she has... It, along with, but, eh, I'm also not gonna read that one, because it's like, everybody's aware of this one. I don't wanna read it. Tarzan's Jane is descended from Princess Belle. I've heard this one because of the way that they look like each other. 
Uh, Elsa and Anna are Rapunzel's cousins. Wedding. You see the background. I don't find that impossible either. The king and queen of Arendelle died on the way to Rapunzel's wedding. The whole thing with the ship and Little Mermaid being connected to it. Yeah. Which Ariel may have found the sunken ship of the king and queen of Arendelle. Yeah. I'm just like passing by the ones that everybody's probably heard of. The king and queen survived the wreck and became Tarzan's parents. Mm. Aladdin takes place in the far future. I don't know about that one. I don't know about that one. Let's see. The genie complains that 10,000 years will give you such a crick in the neck. But then he makes a bunch of modern day pop culture references, including impressions of Arnold Schwarzenegger and Jack Nicholson. So unless the magic lamp has been sitting in front of the TV in the Cave of Wonders, we have to assume Aladdin takes place 10,000 years from now. Of course, there's one other possibility. Aladdin never happened at all. What? Okay, gotta read that. There's always the possibility that the entire story was completely fabricated by the salesman in the opening scene, so you'd buy the lamp. Honestly, though, yes. Even if it, like, even if it isn't true, could I find this lamp and buy it? Because, honestly, yes, I would want... I would want it. Carl dies at the beginning of Up. Ooh, I don't find that impossible. I don't. I don't. Let's see. Uh, the first few minutes of Up are a harsh dose of reality. We need a box of tissues just thinking about it, so it's weird. That was a really sad beginning, oh my gosh. So it's weird the rest of the movie is filled with magical elements like flying houses and talking dogs. One possible explanation, Carl actually passes away the night before he was going to be taken to Shady Oaks. And the movie follows his journey into the afterlife as if it wasn't sad all enough already. Okay. The Incredibles, Violet and Dash were once a super newborns. Ariel's mom was in Peter Pan and was murdered by Captain Hook. I don't know. The Little Mermaids, Ariel and Hercules, are cousins. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe. I mean, Greek gods, right? Anyone who studied Greek mythology would quickly realize how these two Disney characters are totally related. And the Little Mermaid, Ariel's father, is King Triton, who is Greek mythology, is the son of Poseidon, god of the sea. This makes Poseidon Ariel's godfather. Greek mythology also dictates Poseidon is Zeus's brother, who in Greek... So, yeah, they be cousins, and Hercules is Hercules' father. This means King Triton and Hercules are first cousins, making Ariel and Hercules... First cousins once removed. Mm-hmm. I believe it. Nemo didn't survive the attack that killed his mother and siblings. I don't find this um, to be true. I don't know, but let's see. I really do believe he was just the only fish that survived. And that's why, like, Marvin was like... Uh, Finding Nemo opens to arguably one of the saddest Disney scenes of all time. There's so many. There's, you know, there's Mufasa dying. There's uh, Nemo being able to survive amongst his other siblings. There's the up, the beginning, where Ellie already dies and he's like in full depression. So many. Um, uh, the coral of all eggs are attacked by a ferocious fish, leaving Nemo and Marlin the only survivors. Though some fans believe Nemo never survived the attack in the movies. Just an allegory of Marlin's dealing with the stages of grief. I don't know, I think he really was the only one that survived, and like, Marlin's just like, 
uh, you ain't going nowhere, okay? Because if you're gone, I literally have no one now. Not wanting Nemo to go to school, yelling at Nemo when he swims out too far, journeying across the ocean. That's a denial angle about your need to spare, seeing Nemo flush down the drain, acceptance learning to finally let go of the past. Sven mom, Sven's mom was killed by ice harvesters and Kristoff is wearing her pelt. I don't know. The scene in the Emperor's New Groove is actually one of the brutal human murder. I don't know. I don't understand that one. Disney movies aren't afraid to get dark, but for the most part, The Emperor's New Groove is just a fun movie, right? It turns out The Emperor's New Groove has a really dark side, one you saw and totally missed. Remember that fly Cusco saw get eaten while he was walking through the scary jungle? That fly wasn't just a fly. It was a human who had been turned into a fly. Oh, jeez. Only animals who have once been human are able to speak in the movie, so the fly would have had to have once been a human for Cusco to have heard his screams. Finally, last one. Inside Out's Bing Bong is really a monster from Monsters, Inc. Mm, I don't find it impossible, but let's see the connections. Inside Out may have given the illusion of being nothing but laughs. But anyone who's seen it known it's a total heartbreaker. The saddest part of the movie is easily when Bing Bong sacrificed himself so Joy can save Riley. And even though it was completely unnecessary, a little piece of you died inside. But if this theory is believed, that gut-wrenching moment isn't as sad as it seemed. Many fans theorize Bing Bong is actually a monster from Monsters, Inc. Who... World who used to visit Riley when she was younger, such like... Sully visited Boo. If this is true, that means just the memory of Bing Bong died. Not Bing Bong himself. Yeah. There's so many of them, like the number 88 and stuff like that. But this is like Pixar's theories stuff. But yeah, so those are the 20 theories. So, yeah, I might do more of these. I might do like Disney couple ships or just... TV show, movie, couple ships, and see, like, if I personally agree with them or not, like, but yeah, so, that's it.